Germany completely dismantled Scotland in the opening game of the Euros. And while a lot of the headlines were focused on an incredible performance by Muziala, there was a very subtle tactical shift adopted by Nagelsmann that allowed them to create a lot of space up top. Let's take a look. So Germany completely dominated the whole match, but the game was essentially over in the first half, with Scotland down to 10 men and Germany 3-0 up going into half time. We're going to look at the formations here. So Germany started the match in a 4-2-3-1, while Scotland were in a 3-4-2-1. However, Scotland's formation was actually a lot more resembling of a 5-4-1 in their defensive shape, and the vast majority of the match was played in this exact situation. Scotland didn't really have much of a chance pushing forward, they never really got their foothold in the game, and the vast majority of the time they were in this shape here. Now, there was a very, very clever way Germany were able to exploit this shape. And firstly, we have Havertz pushing up up top, and then it was these three players between the lines. We had Wurz, Gundogan, and Musiala occupying the space between the lines. Now, what's interesting about their position is that they weren't pushed up on the defensive line. So Wurz wasn't, for example, here in the half space. He was just behind the midfield line in this position here. Then, as we move up, we have Andrich playing as the holding midfielder just behind Adams, who was the sole striker up top, uh, trying to put a bit of pressure on Germany's back line, but we'll see why that did absolutely nothing. Uh, and then we have Cruz in this position here, along the two centre-backs. So Cruz was, in my opinion, one of the key players in this match. Uh, now, obviously, Muziala got a lot of the headlines, quite rightfully. He had an incredible performance playing, essentially in this space here, but often moving over to this side here, trying to create an overload with words. But the position of Cruz was unbelievable. Now, this isn't a new position. We've seen Cruz do this. Uh, at Real Madrid for the whole season. So there was nothing entirely new and surprising about this position, but it just created so many issues for uh, Scotland trying to stop this shape that Germany adopted. So if we look at this shape, it was essentially a 3-3-3-1. Now the first three was quite narrow, maybe Tar, the central centre-back, was a little bit lower, trying to create a little bit of a diamond. So essentially you'd have the first Scotland player, Adams, the striker, uh, trapped in the middle of this shape here. Then the position of the fullbacks was also really interesting and caused a lot of issues for uh, Scotland's midfield especially because they were just in line with them, sometimes pushing further forward, but they weren't close to Scotland's uh, right wing back or left wing back in this case. So if they wanted to close them down, they had to uh, push off their line and move really far up, which did eventually create space for Wurz or Gundogan or even Muziala coming into this space here or attacking down in this channel here. So these positions were key, and then these three players here were essential as well. Now, we'll get into why these positions were so dangerous, but first I want to highlight the position of Cruz and why this created field and their defence as a whole. As he was one of the midfielders and he moved into this position here, there's a number of different players who could close him down in this position. Firstly, if the striker decided to come over and close him down, well then all that Germany would do and all Germany did in this situation was just move the ball over to this side here, to Rudiger for example, or to Tarr, and then from here we actually saw a lot of through balls that again we'll look at in a few minutes here uh put playing it into this space in behind here into these channels as one player was played out of the game so essentially scotland realized this quite quickly that pressing with adams wasn't necessarily the best solution and adams did essentially just try and jockey the the holding midfielder so in reality, Germany didn't really play through the center too much, but the vast majority of their progression happened in these channels here. So they either went into this player here or they either went out wide. Now, this doesn't mean that they did it directly, but they also did it indirectly. So for example, maybe they go through Wurz and then they play it back through this position here. But essentially, this was one of the main ways they liked to progress. And it was all dependent on which player closed down Cruz. Now, the same was applied to Rudiger as well. But in this situation here, if Cruz was closed down by McTominay, then it would mean that there was this channel here into the center. So if McTominay stepped out, for example, Gunnar could drop in, and then you'd have these balls here into the middle here. And then from these situations is when Germany was extremely dangerous and where their offensive set of players really uh, set the game alive. So we have a couple of examples of these situations. Depending on which player closed down Cruz, we can see that there were different options that they might choose to adopt. For example, in a situation where McGinn was often caught into this triangle here between Cruz, uh, the fullback, and Wurz, this position here, McGinn really struggled to adapt to this uh, overload on his flank. And then even if the wingback tried to close him down, there was just so much space that they could exploit that these triangles either side, but especially on this left flank here, just proved really, really difficult for Scotland to stop. So, for example, if McGinn stepped out, then they would happily just move the ball out to the left. And it was just a game of waiting to see which player essentially moved off their line. Even on this channel here, on the right, and then you just have these balls into the middle here. Rudiger playing these really dangerous forward balls into Havertz or into Gundogan, and it was just 
really, really difficult for Scotland to stop. So this position from Cruz was the first major difference that allowed Germany to completely control the match. We can get a better example of why Cruz's position from a deep position was so dangerous as well, because not only could they play the ball uh, more centrally and to the players on that side of the pitch, but also this overload from the fullback on the opposite flank proved to be extremely dangerous and extremely difficult for Scotland to deal with. Especially with Muziala moving into the half space, with Kimmich overlapping, it left the wing back or the left centre back in two minds on which players to pick up. And we can get a good example of that by looking at their second goal. So if we take a look at the position of Cruz, we can see that Scotland's midfield line struggled to get near him. And if you give Cruz too much time on the ball in these positions, then he can switch play. Then it's interesting to look at the position of Muziala on the opposite flank as well, because the front line of Havertz and Muziala in this position here, they're threatening to run in behind. They're threatening to attack in behind Scotland's defence, which means that they can't push forward. Scotland's defence has to move back, which allows Kimmich, the right back, to push forward and pick up a position where they can then go 2v1 against the fullback. Then in this position here, if Robertson steps out or if the left centre-back steps out in Tierney, then it leaves Muziala free in the half space for a ball in behind and they could cross it. But because the whole defence is pushing back, it frees up this massive channel on the edge of the box that Wurtz is extremely clever to fill uh, and attacks uh, the space on the edge of the box before uh, finishing the chance really nicely in the bottom left corner. Now I want to focus on these three players here as well because their position with Havertz as well up top was extremely key. So you get in this position here when you end up with maybe a 3-2-5, you get these players that they like to play on the defensive line. They want to look for balls forward uh, and then maybe look for the, the midfielder, the attacking midfielder between the lines. But by playing just behind Scotland's midfield line, it left all of Scotland's defence completely in two minds. They, they weren't entirely sure if they should close down because then there were these runs in behind. So essentially, they just ended up not really marking anyone for the majority of the match until the ball was played in. So if the ball went into Muziala, then Tierney might step out, Robertson might step out. But then the position of Kimmich was already ready to attack forward. So you could never really push forward. And because Havertz was always constantly hovering in this space here at the top, Scotland couldn't really push up because then they could just play the ball in behind for Havertz who was quicker than the defenders and could get to the ball first and they did actually exploit this a few times. So essentially with Germany being able to create a lot of space in this position here, it allowed them to completely control the game. And there were a few different ways they wanted to exploit this position. So firstly, because they were starting their runs from a deep position, with Havertz maybe sometimes dropping deep, this would mean that the defensive line would often push up. And as they did push up, then you had these players making runs in behind. So you never really knew where the runs were going to coming from. Sometimes it was Wurtz, sometimes it was Muziala in these positions here. But there were lots of different avenues that they could exploit and they did exploit, especially in the first half. So the game was essentially over at half time. Germany went into the break 3-0 up and Scotland went down to 10 players. But before we finish this video, I want to focus on Germany's defensive structure as well because it was extremely effective and Germany were able to uh, completely shut down any of Scotland's attacks uh, starting from the back or uh, in midfield. And they did so by completely overloading which side of the pitch Scotland were trying to build down. So if they're moving down the right flank, then Gudegaard, Cruz, every German player would push over to this flank here. Now, this was really effective. However, there were a few situations that Scotland were able to take advantage of. And I think this is going to be something that we need to pay attention to when analysing Germany later on in the competition if they make it. And these are these switches of play into this space over here. Not necessarily with a direct ball into this space here, into maybe Robertson or uh, Christie moving out wide. However, if they were able to circulate the ball, then Germany did leave the opposite flank completely vacant that Scotland weren't really able to take advantage of. However, they did end up with the ball in this situation a couple times. And then from here, Germany was still very good at getting over and stopping any threats. However, it is something that I think we need to pay attention to going into the later stages of the competition. And I think Germany are going to make it quite far with this offensive and defensive system. Uh, Germany aren't really a team I paid too much attention to coming into the Euros because they've been going through a little bit of a transition. But I think now we're starting to see where this transition can lead them because we have the perfect blend of experience with players like Rudiger and Cruz and Gundogan but we also have some young raw talent like Wurtz and Muziala and Havertz extremely quick dynamic players that can really uh, set the game alight and can create chances when you least expect it so I really think Germany will go far in this competition but let me know how far you think Germany are going to go in the Euros in the comments down below if you enjoyed this type of tactical analysis then we're going to be doing a lot of match breakdowns during the Euros and we're also going to be doing a lot of live streams streams using this software that I've been working on. A lot of people have been asking uh, what software I use and up to now it's always been uh, DaVinci Resolve. I've always edited my videos uh, with a video editing software but I've been working on this software that I'm really excited to show you and hopefully uh, will be available for all of you uh, in the near future. 
So if you want to join in, the next live stream is going to be Spain, Croatia, Saturday afternoon. So make sure to click the link in the description down below and we can break down the tactics together on stream. Thanks for watching.